Hello, welcome back. I'm Noreen Burke, owner of Call Clutter Fairy Home Organizing, and this is my YouTube channel, The Crafty Organizer. I love bringing you ideas on how to get organized, declutter, do some DIYs and upcycles, and every once in a while, do some crafts. And that's what we're doing today. I love fall. It's one of the first things that I get super excited about because for me it's the kickoff for the rest of the year where I get to change out my holiday decor almost monthly and of course it leads me up to my favorite holiday which is Christmas. But today we're going to work on two fall DIYs that I got with dollar store supplies. I'm pretty sure you can find these supplies at almost any discount dollar store. First, I want to say thank you to some of my friend mail that I've gotten. I don't want to go into a lot of time with this, but some of these pieces were just too cute to not share. The first thing that I got was Domino. This is from Twyla and she recreated Domino for me, which I love Twyla. This was so cute and I appreciated the added gift inside. So thank you so much. I'm definitely gonna put this up on my shelves. The next thing I wanted to show was this amazing little vintage postcard that I got. I can't show the back because it has her address on it, but Debbie, I promise I'm gonna frame this and put it up behind me as well. I just thought this was beautiful and it absolutely fits my aesthetic. Nona made me this adorable notebook and it's funny because this was a gift that I was thinking about making for my Patreons this month. So I've been doing tutorials and then she sends me this one and it had this adorable little coordinated pen. So Nona, thank you. I can't wait to use this. Bonita made me this handmade card that is just stunning. I am amazed at the creativity of you guys. I love seeing your ideas, your techniques on things and just the personal touches you give like candy always makes these beautiful envelopes and every time I see the font handwriting I know it's from her and she writes me these lovely letters letting me know what's going on so I appreciate these so much it really makes my day when I go to the mailbox and I see I've got new friend mail which is why I like offering it to you as well so if you're not familiar with my friend mail program I know so many of you are isolated right now you're not with your friends your family or your co-workers so my friend mail is a easy way to go ahead and stay connected with someone. All you have to do is go in the description below and find my email. Email me either your address or send me a quick note and we can correspond through email. Or since I love making cards and so many of you have shared your handmade cards with me, I am so happy to write a little note to you, send it to you via snail mail and let you get something besides a bill to brighten your day. So if you're interested in that, all of the information is down in the description below. So let's get into today's DIY. I got these two mop heads from the Dollar Tree a couple weeks ago when I did my Dollar Tree haul, and I was amazed at the quality of these. So the first thing I did was start taking these apart. Now this first one is a microfiber mop. It did not say what the material was, but it's this soft textured yarn almost, and it has little knots which created the perfect texture for me. The other was just a basic rope mop, and I liked this because, again, it had a rougher texture, but they were both a true white, and that was absolutely the farmhouse look that I was going for. I had a couple of pumpkins that I got from Dollar Trees from years past that were not looking good anymore, so instead of throwing them away, I decided to upcycle them. Now, if you'll notice, one of these has a hole at the bottom, and that's a quick tell at Dollar Tree when you're shopping. If it has a hole, it's usually hollow, which means you can carve it out. Otherwise, they're solid. So I began by pulling the mop material out. And the mop head just has a support going across the top, which is holding it in place. So by twisting the one side and then gently pulling, this slid out pretty easily. It would get snagged a little, so I would just keep kind of reining it in, much like when I pull my hair out of a ponytail. I have to confine the hair to one, one direction so that it doesn't get all tangled up. But this really did slide out pretty easily, as you can see. And once I got to the end where it was a little bit fluffier, I just started pulling out the individual strands until the whole thing inevitably popped out. Now here's what surprised me with this. Once I got it out, I was able to see it was just wrapped. So when I undid that little loop, I realized that this was one continuous piece of yarn. Do you want to guess how long this yarn was? I measured. 
It was 30 yards of this material, 90 feet for you to do whatever your DIY heart desires. So I began by going up and down in quarters on this pumpkin and it did not turn out well. So as you can see, it was just a mess. Uh, I didn't like the orange going through. I learned that you have to be very gentle with the yarn because it's nice and fluffy, but if you give even a little bit of tension, it gets skinny really fast. So it's nice and fluffy, but the minute you pull it, it just becomes thin, which is okay. I wasn't being very consistent with how tight I was pulling it, and I just didn't like the look. So I ripped it apart and decided to paint my pumpkin white. I just used basic acrylic, but you could use spray paint or whatever paint you have lying around, and match the decor to what you want. I really wanted the white farmhouse look. My coffee bar theme this year is very neutral, so I'm using a lot of black and white gingham, grays, and neutrals. Once that was dry, again, I wasn't worried about too solid of a coverage because I am just using it to tone down the orange. So I took a little poker tool that I had and I just poked a small hole and fed the beginning of the yarn through. And what I'm going to do this time, since I didn't like the look of going up and down, is I'm gently going to wrap this in a circular motion all the way around this pumpkin. So I'm gonna really focus on the beginning parts with glue to make sure that my starting point is solid. But then once I really get going, I'm just gonna breeze through this and fast forward it. So I would go every, I don't know, inch, inch and a half, put a little dab of glue down, and please don't burn yourselves. Make sure you're using a safety tool to get that pressed down because this is a thin yarn and it will go through and burn you. So I'm just gonna keep spinning this around in a circular motion tacking it down. Now something I do wish I had done is twist the yarn just a little bit so that I got more of a checkerboard, if you will, of the yarn. What happened with me going straight and circular is that the grays were kind of in one place all together and the whites were, but lesson learned. So once I get down, you can see I am just spinning it and then I'll fluff it together and just run a little bit of glue in between the section to tack down the glue. And that was a really efficient way. I spent about 20 minutes total making this pumpkin, so it was a really fast project. But then once I got beyond that point, I flipped it over so that I could control and see what I was doing. And I just slowly worked my way back up to the top, or in this case, the bottom, and that's where I focused a lot more glue again, just to make sure that it was solid and wouldn't unravel. Once that was done, I found a little piece of branch and because I wasn't out in the park at all and it was 11 o'clock at night when I was doing this, I just got a succulent that I had broken down and just used that. But you can use whatever you want. Use a cork, use a tree branch, use raffia that's sticking out. You can be as creative as you want here. After I put the twig in, it was looking very apple-like to me, and I didn't like that, so I wanted to give some of the pumpkin definition. So here I did pull the yarn tautly, but I just started making small sections kind of like a pie, and I would use the stem as my point to change directions. So I was just going up, around the stem, and then coming down in a different section to create those little spaces that are so reminiscent of a pumpkin. Once I felt like I had enough sections, I went ahead and tied it off at the top. And then I was able to manipulate until I felt like it was pretty even and looked more like a pumpkin. The last thing I did is I had this little metal stem that came off of a Dollar Tree pumpkin last year. It was a little tiny one and I kind of felt like it overpowered it. So I popped it off and I've been holding on to it. And I'm glad I did because it was the perfect accessory for this little pumpkin. So what I did is I just bent the wire around the stem and played with it a little until I had the exact look that I liked. And I did add a little fall leaf behind it just to give it a little bit of color. And when I took this mop apart, I found that there were solid long strings and these were about 20 inches. With these mop heads, I know I'm gonna do something with them. They are just the perfect base for what? I don't know yet, but rest assured I'm gonna make a DIY out of these. So I'm setting those aside. 
And then with these individual rope strings, I'm just going to start at attaching them. And this one I am going to go up and down on this pumpkin so that I have a different texture and different direction than the first one. So I'm just going to use once again a hole and that little poker and I'm going to shove it in. And I was going to wrap all the way around but then I started thinking if I do that eventually the base will overlap so much that it'll make it wobbly and it won't have a flat surface. So I changed directions and instead would go down to the base, anchor it, and then come back up. And that way I'm ensured to have a nice flat bottom. Now instead of going side by side, I'm gonna create sections so I really get that rind look that is so identifiable with pumpkins. So as you can see here, I'm creating pie sections. Get it, pumpkin pie? Sorry. Uh, but I'm just going to create different sections and in a second here I'm going to fast forward so that you kind of get the gist of what I'm doing. But by just tacking it towards the stem because I want to make sure this part looks really nice and then I'm following the grooves of the existing pumpkin and letting that kind of be my guide. So I'll reach the bottom, come back up. I found my scraper worked really well. If you didn't see my favorite craft supplies, I went over this scraper that I got from, I think, Daiso. But any food scraper, I find this tool invaluable when I'm crafting, and this was no exception. I'd love to hear in the comments what DIY projects you're making for fall, or if you just skip fall and go straight into Halloween. <laughs> So here's where the scraper is really valuable. I can press into the rope here and really give it that groove that makes it look like a pumpkin. All in all, I spent about 40 minutes on this particular one and as I would finish up a section and have a groove, I would just take a little scrap and tuck it in. This really was such a simple project to do. And again, my scraper, but you could probably use a stick or your X-Acto knife as long as you're careful just allowed me to really tuck the fibers in and I would just work it until it all blended together. So here I am just finishing that last section. I would put some glue in and when it got towards the end, I would put the glue and then roll it closer so that I didn't have to fill it in. Once again, that invaluable scraping tool allowed me to really push it in so that I didn't have any bumpy edges and then I could just manipulate the yarn and spread it out just a little until there was no orange visible. This reminds me of some of the pumpkins that I've seen using sweaters and that's another one I would like to try. I've been avoiding the thrift stores just so that we're still safe and this was something that I had around but I very much like the texture of it and it was such an easy project to do. So now that it is completely covered and I'm happy with it, I'm going to go ahead and add my leaves and my stem. And again, I just used the succulent stem that I had, but you can use any twig, cork, raffia, whatever you'd like to have as a stem. And I just glued it to the top. I didn't worry about poking it through. And then I had, this is actually grape leaf, but I didn't have any pumpkin leaves. And if you don't tell anybody, I won't tell anybody. I thought it looked close enough. And once I got it in place, I just used a very small piece of the rope that was left over to cover where I had glued it and give it a more finished look. And here is what it looks like up on my coffee bar. I am really happy with these. I was looking for something that was neutral, something that very much had texture to it, and I think these totally fit the bill. So I went with muted greens, black, white and just a touch of gray here and there. So here's the overall look of my coffee bar and if you didn't already know this I completely copied this coffee bar idea from the Daily DIYer. She has since changed the look of her bar which makes me sad because I loved seeing her change out her decor every season but if you like seeing these let me know in the comments below. I'll continue tormenting you every time I change it around and this is the kickoff. So now we'll be changing it every month. I'll do it here for fall, Halloween, Thanksgiving, Christmas, New Year, and I'll probably wrap it up with Valentine's Day. And then it slows down as the seasons just kind of mellow out from spring going into fall again. But my coffee bar is my favorite part of the house. It's where I really like displaying and coming up with new ideas. The chalkboard back really lets me fill in and be creative and I just copy little designs that I find on Google for chalk art. Like for this I just did 
fall or pumpkin chalk art and I would just copy the best I can. It's definitely not as good as what I saw on Google, but it's good enough to make me happy. This was a fun break to do a little DIY project because what I've been working on a lot lately is working with you to get you organized. I released a small program where I'm doing a set amount of virtual organizing projects. The last wave was about eight. This next wave I'm hoping to do 10 or 12. And that's because I've gotten more Patreon supporters. So thank you so much. Uh, it's, it's actually a lot of time going through the pictures, coming up with ideas, setting up the Zoom calls, working with them, following up, and I'm so grateful for the opportunity. So thank you so much to my Patreon supporters. If you're interested in becoming a virtual organizee, please follow the instructions below or send me an email saying that you're interested. I'll give you all of the instructions. If you're interested in helping so that I can assist more people with virtual organizing, my Patreon information is also in that description below. Also, don't forget to click like, subscribe so that you can see how these virtual organizing projects turn out, and leave me a comment about today's project, about what you liked, and do you decorate for fall, do you call it autumn, or do you wait for Thanksgiving? That's all I have for today. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in just a couple days. Bye!